Welcome to Tech Talks. This is a three-part retail cybersecurity series on digital credit card fraud, e-commerce, ATO, and PCI compliance. Today's Tech Talk is the first of the three-part series and is focused on helping you detect digital credit card fraud with Splunk. We value you as a customer and partner and want you to achieve success in your digital journey with Splunk. Our experts helped create these best practices and we want you to leverage them to keep online shopping safe and fun. I'm Mary Chen, Senior Product Marketing Manager at Splunk. I live in the intersection of marketing and retail with a focus on using Splunk products to help retail customers succeed in an evolving landscape. Even though the session is mainly focused on retail applications, you'll find these best practices and tips relevant to telco, manufacturing, and other vertical markets operating e-commerce sites. Joining me today is Andrew Morris, our senior security strategist specializing in fraud management. We're excited to share with you some ways on how you can protect your e-commerce sites from virtual card skimming. First, I'll spend a few minutes to talk about the growing threat of online credit card skimmers operating within your website and how Splunk can enable retailers to continuously monitor for these kinds of attacks and protect you from data theft. Then Andrew will demo some ways on how you can protect your systems and your customer's data. Lastly, we'll cover additional resources available to you to take advantage of anomaly detection capabilities in Splunk. Our team will be available for Q&A throughout the session via the Q&A widget within your screen. You can also follow up with additional questions through the Splunk community website under the Tech Talk Discussions category. Now, let's get started. Global losses from all forms of credit card fraud were estimated by the Nielsen report to be 32 billion in 2019. And digital credit card skimmers, also known as web skimmers, is one of the fast growing type of fraud impacting retailers today. According to Malwarebytes, online credit card skimming has increased by 26% in March alone. As more people continue to shop online, we can anticipate a larger number of transactions to be impacted by credit card skimmers moving forward. We've also learned from a recent survey by Marketa, a card issuing platform, that consumers prefer digital security over convenience. This type of criminal activity creates a very complex range of risks, responsibilities, and uncertainties for retailers. If this happens on your website, how do you respond? What are your risks and how would you investigate? We're here to show you how to continuously monitor for these kinds of attacks so you can address these questions in a timely manner. We recommend that you look at data in three places. The first place to start is your OS logs. File change, add, delete are easy to log in most OS. This will detect a malicious PNG file added to your system and any changes made to your homepage. You would also want to look at your website metrics. A large increase in checkout time and increased rate in cart abandonment will alert your marketing and site reliability teams of suspicious activity. And third, monitoring your website and logging the details for monitoring systems and enterprise proxies will show some important events. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to Andrew to do a deep dive into the data for analysis and walk us through a demo of how Splunk can help detect this kind of fraud. Welcome to today's talk. I am Andrew Morris, a senior security strategist here at Splunk. As part of the security strategist team, I get to evangelize the power and value of Splunk while also solving real problems with Splunk. Having worked in fraud and security roles for both customers and vendors, understand the challenges our customers face, and I enjoy helping them find solutions to their problems. I love talking about the Splunk platform as it gives an organization the ability to solve IT operations, security, and fraud problems all in one place using the data they already have. Let's start off with a quick review on how virtual card skimming occurs and why it can be difficult to detect. The attack begins with the criminal gaining access to the internal parts of your website and web pages. 
This is usually an external attack, but a malicious insider could be the attacker as well. The initial attack can be via SQL injection, misconfiguration, or vulnerabilities in the software. These attacks, these attacks are often targeted against the e-commerce software as it may not be protected as well as the operating system. If this is a malicious insider, they could be taking advantage of their legitimate access to your website and its contents. Once the attacker has access, they'll install files or scripts that run on your web pages with the aim being to steal data. Keep in mind that these scripts and files do not usually trigger antivirus tools as they are not considered malware or viruses. Now when the customer navigates to your site using their browser, the script runs invisibly in the user's browser. As the user fills out the checkout page, their data is collected and their data is sent to the fraudster somewhere online. These scripts can launch as soon as the user hits your home page, running hidden in the browser and designed to steal information as it's input into a form, or the scripts can redirect the user to a spoof checkout page. This fictitious checkout page is designed to collect data and upon submit, show the user an error page and finally redirect that user back to the real checkout page. Keep in mind that this is happening in the user's browser, not on your e-commerce server. Your server and your security logs will not see communication from the customer machine to the fraudster. Now let's look at ways that you can use Splunk and your existing data to detect virtual card skimmers. Today we're going to cover three areas of detection. OS monitoring, website metrics using real user monitoring, and synthetic user monitoring. Realizing that virtual card skimmer attacks rely on changing or adding files, we should first look for unexpected file system changes. OS Query is an open source and cross-platform tool used to monitor all kinds of server, server statistics. You can find it online for free and monitor the logs it creates with Splunk. Let's look at some OS Query data. And we scroll down as our data populates. To the name field, we can see lots of different reported metrics. We want to focus on a part of OS Query used for file integrity monitoring. Integrity monitoring. So we're going to click on this PacFim file events and add it to our search. Now we still have 400 file events. So we also want to modify our search and limit it to changes in the slash home directory and make an easy to read output using the table command showing only files that have been updated. Now in this example, we see only files in the home directory that were changed. This could be modified to watch for files in web server directories that are added or changed and maybe of a specific file type. Common practice dictates that there are change windows that is specific times in your organization for website changes to occur. Any change happening outside these windows should be cause for alarm. Now with a search like this, we can click Save As and convert this search into an alert. We can then have it run periodically and notify us to take some kind of action. Run a script, send email, an API to another application, some way to notify us that this has occurred. This may not stop insider threats as the person may be changing files and adding them during official change windows. But that is why we take a layered approach and look at different methods of detection. A second area of detection is around server metrics that include real user monitoring. One recent virtual skimmer attack of a high profile company that I wrote a blog post about installed a hidden image file that contained embedded malicious scripts. Presumably, they used this image file to avoid anyone noticing a new or changed script file. Another method to detect new files is by looking at file distribution of web page requests. Seeing a new file that was never seen before could be a warning. 
Let's take a look at web server access logs. We're going to limit our time to about one week and we will count files grouping them into one day buckets. This will take a few seconds to, to build out this visualization. As it builds out, we can see the file names on the right. And we can see a distribution that looks the same on all days except for one. This one bar over here on the right, member.php, appears much higher than it has ever before. Why is there a three time increase in access to this file? This change is also on Friday. Attackers tend to target weekends as they know less people are watching or available to respond. In Splunk, we can have dashboards of graphs like this, or we can set alerts that compare these numbers to baselines and then alert on differences. If this were a new file that appeared in your access logs outside of a change window, it's something you should probably investigate. Some types of virtual skimmer attacks may redirect your customer to another site to steal data, then redirect customers back to your site to complete the transaction. If we know what the normal average checkout time is, then it's easy for us to look for major changes. One of the commands in Splunk that works well for calculating time between events is the transaction command. The transaction command can follow a user or transaction using some criteria. Knowing the name of the cookie and the name of the files that begin and end a transaction will help us identify a transaction. In this case, we have a cookie called JSessionID assigned to each user. We also know that the purchase transaction begins with view cart and it ends with a post to the checkout page. We can then calculate the average checkout time. Here we see the average checkout time is about five and a half seconds. We can use this calculation in another search that looks for outliers. If a customer gets redirected to a skimming site and back to your site, they should have to enter their billing information two times. Therefore, their checkout time should be much longer than average. Looking for changes in checkout times compared to the average can be a good indicator of a problem. In this example, we created a new value called upper bound. This is the average checkout time from before, plus two standard deviations. A standard deviation is a measure of how spread out your numbers are. Anyone that takes longer than this is an outlier. Looking at the column called duration, we see customers that took much longer than average to complete the checkout process. This search will have to be customized for your website, but if customers start to take longer than average, this could be a system issue or it could be a skimming attack. Longer checkout times can cause customer frustration. After directing the customer to their fake checkout page, the attacker collects the customer data and displays an error message. The customer is then automatically redirected back to the legitimate checkout page where they have to re-enter their information cart abandonment will likely go up. Splunk can take your same web logs and calculate cart abandonment. This is easy to graph and look for changes. We will use our same transaction command and search for the complete and incomplete transactions, then subtract one from the other. In the bar chart, we see the total number of shopping events followed by purchases, and the difference is in the third bar, abandonment. Our sample data doesn't show much difference over time, but you could easily create an alert if the abandonment number passed a threshold. This kind of statistic is important for more than just fraud detection. These last few examples cover real user monitoring as an indicator of fraud or possibly a system problem. But what if the virtual skimmer attack is not redirecting anyone but just stealing data while the user completes the checkout process on your website. Let's look at our final detection mechanism that looks for the data exfiltration part of any virtual skimmer attack. 
The final area of detection we want to cover is around synthetic user monitoring. Instead of looking at real customer behavior from the system logs, we want to run sample transactions and monitor behavior from the web browser side of things. Most websites today are running scripts from third parties. On average, there are dozens of different scripts loaded per website. How do you know these scripts are not interfering with the customer journey or stealing data? Remember, these scripts are running in the customer's browser and you have no visibility into how these scripts are behaving after they are served to the user by your site. There are many ways to do synthetic user monitoring. In its simplest form, you use a dedicated workstation to run scripts that download your web pages. curl and wget are simple commands that can be used to download files from your website. curl is a good tool for downloading the source of a web page and can be used to make sure that a site is accessible to others and is serving the HTML code you expect. But curl won't download the related images or run JavaScript files that are part of a web page. WGET will download all files related to a web page, or you can download all files from an entire website, including images, scripts, and anything else. You can then compare the files downloaded to what you expected. It's not hard, but you do have to build it yourself, and this doesn't really test how a website is performing. It just validates that all files are as expected. It would not stop the malicious insider that has changed the source files. But there are dedicated tools designed for synthetic user monitoring. Selenium is an open source tool for monitoring the real behavior of a website through a browser. It can mimic a customer and log behavior that doesn't match what is expected. This kind of synthetic user monitoring tool should log all browser events to Splunk and then Splunk can alert if there are anomalies. Selenium configuration is an involved topic, but there are multiple conf talks and blog posts that cover ways to use Selenium with Splunk that can easily be found via a Google search. Going to our Splunk Conf web page and searching for Selenium, we'll show you a Conf19 talk that's designed around showing you how to use Selenium and Splunk to monitor web apps for IT solutions. Another Conf talk from Conf14 has a talk on transaction monitoring. These talks can give you ideas on how to get started using Selenium with Splunk. Synthetic user monitoring should catch JavaScript running in ways we don't expect, but the bad guys are always devising new tactics to hide their behavior. So there is one more thing that we can do in this area to catch the criminal. Remember that the attacker has to get the data off the customer machine. So this workstation that mimics user behavior will be making connections to unexpected places in order to deliver their stolen data. In the security space, we like to say the network doesn't lie. So even if this behavior is missed by synthetic user monitoring tools, network monitoring will see outbound connections from the workstation that is performing the synthetic user monitoring. Your proxy server will log these outbound connections, but you should ensure that you are watching for this unexpected traffic that originates from the synthetic user monitoring workstation. Splunk Security Essentials is a free app on Splunk Base. It has many security searches, but there is one in particular that we can use in this situation. After installing Splunk Security Essentials, we want to find the search for connection to new domain. The description tells us that it detects when users browse to domains never before, see, never before seen in your organization. Scrolling down, we see panels for different metrics collected. We see top domains and rare domains, number of domain, domains browsed to, but what we really care about are the outliers. If we click on the line-by-line -line SPL documentation, we get a detailed explanation of how this search works. We see that proxy logs are being used, the URLs are extracted, 
and they are compared to previously seen URLs. If the earliest time a URL was seen is today, it is considered new. This search can be used with your own data, or you can take this a step further and compare URLs accessed by this synthetic user monitoring machine to an approved list of URLs. Anything not on the approved list would trigger an alert and you would know immediately that your test machine is connecting to a domain that it should not be connecting to. Splunk Security Essentials is a great way to discover new searches and techniques. It has over 500 different searches that often have applicability outside of just security. One final point on synthetic user monitoring. During the time that we were developing this talk, Splunk made a new acquisition. Understanding the importance of data and website monitoring, Splunk acquired Rigor. If you want robust synthetic user monitoring, but you don't want to build it or you want a Splunk supported solution, then Rigor may be a good option for you. The techniques shown today should be a part of your approach for monitoring your website for IT issues, fraud issues, and security issues. Best practice is a layered approach to avoid gaps in monitoring. These layers should include open source monitoring, real user monitoring, and synthetic user monitoring, also including network monitoring. Splunk Enterprise can be the central platform for all your data and be the tool that correlates this data into useful alerts. For more advanced orchestration and response, alerts can be sent to Splunk Phantom, but that is another topic. The important thing to remember is that you can't detect fraud if you're not watching for it. We're about ready to wrap up this tech talk, but before we do, I wanted to share some resources available to you to continue your journey. You will receive these assets and the recording in a follow-up email. Some links for content related to this talk include a blog post on virtual skimming attacks, the Splunk Security Essentials app, Splunk technical add-ons, like one for OS Query. Technical add-ons make it easier to work with data sources. And some Splunk command documentation for finding outliers in your data. Finally, don't forget that we have an incredible community of Splunk users on our community site. You can search and ask questions in the answer section. You can continue the conversations for this talk within the discussion section called Tech Talks. And there is Splunk Ideas, where you can submit new product enhancements or vote for current ideas from other customers. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to join us today. Please tune back in for future Tech Talks, and we're excited to share this series with you.